the service we had teas and coffees and those lovely cakes to be had. And then we settled down in the main auditorium for some Christian songs and Dave followed it this with his testimony. So a little bit about me and my background. I'm just going to give a five minute testimony. If you want to read more, there's a bit more in the Biker Bible. But yeah, I was born, uh, would you believe, here in Whitby. <laughs> um, and my dad was a police constable here. Um, and I was uh, the second eldest of four children. And uh, back in the 1960s, um, life was, was tough. We lived in a police house, which I remember had some broken windows, uh, just one coal fire, no central heating, ice on the inside of the windows. I used to shiver as I got out of the bath. I can remember all those things. So when kids tell me today that they're having a hard time, oh, yeah, I remember the 60s. Um, so we moved to a small village um, in, in North Yorkshire uh, where my dad did a country beat. So I was the copper's kid in a local village and everybody knew everybody else in this village so I could be half a mile away from home and you'd get somebody coming out of the house saying does the dad know where you are? And I'd say yeah yeah I'd be about eight or nine years of age and I'd be like a couple of miles away from home um, nowadays with safeguarding issues many parents quite rightly don't let their kids wonder but back then you could get out and just do your thing so I was out there either scrumping apples or getting into trouble over something or other and my dad would be going around the village looking for me and then he'd take me home and say get back home lad get back home you're embarrassing me get back home sorry dad sorry um i didn't get on at school i didn't like school i didn't like being in the classroom um i used to throw chairs around and run out of school and part of the reason I later discovered was I was nearly blind in one eye and I was deaf in one ear and I couldn't hear what the teacher was teaching so it just didn't make sense to me. Plus I could see the world outside and I wanted to be out there, I wanted to be off. And that led me to then at weekends go with my dad when he wasn't working. Uh, we'd go up onto the farms and he was friends with the farmers because he used to go around all the farmers and check on the livestock and everything. And uh, yeah, I got to drive tractors when I was six or seven and they had a tractor shed and in the tractor shed at the back there was this machine and it was a Norton Villiers Triumph 175 Enduro and I looked at this machine and I thought it was great and when my friend started it up we were both seven by the way he started it up rode it out the tractor shed no helmet no gloves nothing to say and he rode it down that field. I said, I want to go, I want to go. So I rode it and that was it. I was hooked. Two wheels for me was definitely something that was imprinted on me. Um, so yeah, back in the village, I was riding bicycles through people's gardens, kick door run, all the usual things that you're not supposed to do when you're the policeman's son and you're supposed to be leading by example. But anyway, uh, when I was 11, we moved to Scarborough. My dad got promotion as a sergeant, uh, probably because of all the experience he'd had almost arresting his son all that time in the village. Um, so yeah, we settled in, in Scarborough and it was town life, very different to village life. Mum and dad went to church, I had to go to Sunday school. It was a Methodist church. It was old ladies singing in loud voices with hats, that's what I remember, and I hated it. I thought it was, Mum and Dad might like it, but it's not for me. This God business, it's not for me. Jesus, yeah, he probably was a good guy, but it's not for me. So when I uh, was in my early teens, yeah, you got it, I rebelled a lot. Denim jacket, badges on the back, Dr. Martin's boots, that was me. And I was up to mischief a lot of the time. I remember once pushing a bike down a road in Scarborough, two young police officers got out of a panda car and I'm pushing this bike, no registration plate on it. Uh, is this your bike? Uh, no, it's my mate's. And it was my mate's. I was taking it to his house. Uh, is it stolen? No, no, it's not stolen. Right. Out came the pad. Name. So I gave him my name. And it's an unusual surname is Finan. It's Irish. Finan. Are you related to Ray Finan? 
I said, yeah, it's my dad. He was only their shift sergeant. I'd never seen two coppers get in the car so quick and whiz off. <laughs> they weren't going to arrest their sergeant's son. But anyway, I used to get up to all sorts. Uh, my dad, uh, God bless him, has, uh, has forgiven me, I believe. <laughs> so anyway, when I was 17, who needed God? Who needed the Methodist Church? I knew there was a whole world out there for me to explore. So at age 17, I got a job, worked on a farm, earned some money, and I borrowed a helmet, bought a bike off a farmer, and I rode it home without even telling my mum and dad I was buying a bike, because I knew they wouldn't approve. And I rode it home, and I said, Mum, Dad, I bought this bike. And my dad looked at my mum, my mum looked at my dad, and my dad says, well, I suppose we better get him a helmet then. <laughs> oh dear, what was I like? Okay, early 20s, I was in London. The picture changes somewhat. I'd rejected lots of things. I was hanging about with a bike gang. I had lost my job. I was living on the edges of London, a place called Swanley in Kent. I had been working in a special school with kids with special needs. I'd lost a relationship with a girlfriend. I'd tried drugs. I'd cut off from my family altogether. I was just lost, like a prodigal. And then, I was riding past a building one day on my bike, and I got a voice inside my helmet saying, I want you to go there. So I pulled over to the side of the road. Who's talking to me? Who's talking? And I just knew it was Jesus. I said, Lord, why are you even bothering with me? I was at the low, low, low point at that time. He said, you can go my way or the world's way. If you go into that building over there, which is a church, uh, I later discovered it was St. Peter's, Hextable in Kent. He said, you go in there and you can turn your life around or you can continue going man's way. You choose. It's a choice. And you know what? I just broke down at the side of the road there. I, I prayed a prayer and I said, Lord, if it's you, if it's truly you. I didn't realise that my mum, my dad, and everybody back in Scarborough in the church, they never quit praying for me. They never quit praying for me. I just want to encourage you, if you're praying for somebody, don't quit. You don't know the impact it's going to have. And I went into that church and I turned my life around. And there's many more chapters I can tell you on the journey with Jesus. But that was a key point in my life, a, a turning point. So, my journey through life hasn't always been easy. I've still made mistakes. I fall down. But he is patient who promised. And Jesus' burden is easy and his yoke is light. And he has and, see me, and will see me through as I focus on him and I serve him. So... My prayer is that God will continue to use me and my bike because he uses the passions that he gives us and equips us to go forward and to, to share with others. So yeah, this is a bit of my own prodigal son story. And if you remember the story in the Bible, um, there are many prodigals out there who, who need to come home and we need to keep praying for them. Okay. That's a glimpse into Dave's life, how Jesus changed his life for the good. If you'd like to learn more, walk into a church. Failing that, you can always contact CMA. We have a website. The details are easily available. Contact somebody there and we can get back to you. Look after yourselves. You change Dave's life around, it could change yours could be the biggest thing you've ever done in your life. God bless you.